Welcome to the Port of Los Angeles. Thank you for joining us for a virtual tour of one of the busiest harbors in the world. Our annual free harbor tours are traditionally hosted in May in honor of World Trade Week and to highlight the importance of international trade to our local communities, the region, the state, and the nation. The container ships you will see today are carrying cargo to and from ports around the world, including China, Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, Vietnam, and more. Many of the things you take for granted every day, food, clothing, electronic equipment, furniture, auto parts, and more, come to you through a port. In fact, 95% of all international trade is done by ship. Of all the goods coming into the U.S., 43% come in right here, to the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. And of those goods, half are consumed right here in the five-county Greater Los Angeles area. Our tour begins from the historic Municipal Ferry Building, which is now the home of the Los Angeles Maritime Museum. The Municipal Ferry Building was completed in 1941, and service began in September of that same year. Before the Vincent Somers Bridge was built, ferry boats used to carry people and cars between San Pedro and Terminal Island to work in the canneries or on farms. When the bridge opened, the ferry boats and their terminals weren't needed anymore, so the ferry building on the Terminal Island was removed. The San Pedro Ferry Boat Terminal was then converted into the Los Angeles Maritime Museum, which tells the fascinating history of ships and the port. Just ahead is the future site of West Harbor. West Harbor will be a vibrant, family-friendly destination with boutique-style office spaces, fresh market, shopping, dining, a dynamic promenade with oceanside access, and an open-air amphitheater for live entertainment. Designed with urban sustainability and environmental sensitivities, the new West Harbor will be the quintessential jewel of the LA waterfront. The West Harbor will be completed in a few short years. West Harbor will also be the home of the official tall ships of Los Angeles, the Irving Johnson and the Exe Johnson, a set of twin brigantines built here at the Port of Los Angeles. The boats are named for the sailing pioneers Exe Johnson and Irving Johnson. The tall ships are owned and operated by the Los Angeles Maritime Institute, LAMI, Top Sail Youth Program a nonprofit organization that helps youth learn discipline and teamwork through sailing. Here on the right is the Southern Pacific Slip, where many of the fishing boats sail out of this harbor tie up. The crews on the boats catch the fish you buy in restaurants and supermarkets throughout the state. Just ahead, you'll see a bright coral building. This is the municipal fish market, where buyers come early in the morning to select from the fresh catch of the day. Sea lions are often seen swimming outside hoping for a few leftovers. On the other side of the municipal fish market is the home of Alta Sea, where ocean innovators work together. Alta Sea strives to bring leaders in science, business, and education together to generate innovative solutions to global challenges and sustainability. UCLA and USC will be moving their education center to this area in the near future. The big block building with the water tower is warehouse number one. Built in 1915 with concrete walls four feet thick, it was the port's first major warehouse. Today, it is used primarily for warehousing small items and on occasion as a Hollywood film location. The water tower atop warehouse number one has greetings in 13 languages to welcome the crews and passengers on ships from around the world arriving here daily. If you look towards the water's edge in front of warehouse number one, you'll see the port's pilot station. A port pilot is required to be aboard every large ship entering and leaving the port of Los Angeles. The pilot assists the captain to guide the vessel safely inside the main channel because our pilots know these waters better than any other mariner. Up ahead is the SS Lane Victory, a 10,000-ton fully operational American Victory class cargo ship restored and operated by an all-volunteer crew of the U.S. Merchant Marine veterans of World War II. 
It saw service in World War II, Korea, and in the Vietnam War. As a rare surviving victory ship, she is a designated U.S. National Historic Landmark. The victory ship was named after Bishop Isaac Lane, who established Lane College as a high school for black youth in 1882. The school later gained prominence as a historical black college. Looking ahead towards the horizon, you can see the Los Angeles Harbor Breakwater. The federal government built this big rock wall nearly 100 years ago to keep the waves out of the harbor. Because of the breakwater, ships can come here and unload their cargo in calm water. At the end of the breakwater, just to your left, is the Los Angeles Harbor Lighthouse, also known as Angel's Gate, which welcomes ships into the harbor. Angel's Gate has provided 100 years of service to ships and boaters sailing into the San Pedro Bay. It is the only lighthouse with a green lantern, whereas most are white. The green light helps distinguish the Angel's Gate light from that of Queen's Gate in Long Beach. To the right or western end of the breakwater are Cabrillo Beach and Cabrillo Marina. There are approximately 4,000 small boat slips in a secure zone at the Port of Los Angeles. Thousands of people use the Cabrillo Fishing Pier every year for fishing or just cooling off on a hot summer day. Cabrillo Beach is home to the historic Cabrillo Beach Bathhouse and the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. As we turn north, the large island up ahead is Pier 400, the port's largest container terminal operated by APM Terminals. APMT is part of the AP Moeller Maersk Transportation and Logistics Groups that includes Maersk, the world's largest container shipping line. APMT services the 2M Shipping Alliance, whose members are Maersk and the Mediterranean Shipping Company, or MSC, as well as members of the Alliance. This phenomenal man-made terminal was created by dirt that was dredged up from the bottom of the harbor to make deeper shipping lanes, and that dirt was deposited within a perimeter of quarry rock to make Pier 400. The state-of-the-art terminal is 484 acres, or as big as 366 football fields. At the southernmost tip of Pier 400 is a protected area. The port has created the state's most successful nesting habitat for the endangered California least tern. As we begin our turn, now on our right side is Pier 300, operated by Phoenix Marine Services and is the second largest container terminal at the Port of Los Angeles. Formerly known as Eagle Marine Services LTD, Phoenix has been a Port of Los Angeles tenant since 1997. Far off to your left is where you can find the memorial to the Terminal Island Japanese Fishing Village. Created by the Terminal Islanders Association and dedicated in 2002, the memorial at the site along Fish Harbor serves as a reminder of the Japanese American community who once resided there. The area on our right is Reservation Point. This area of the port is under federal jurisdiction. The government has the Coast Guard, U.S. Customs, Immigration and Naturalization Services, and a prison facility located here. In addition to helping to keep the port safe for shipping operations and smooth flow of commerce, the port also has a responsibility to its customers, port workers, and neighbors. The port is working diligently with the U.S. Coast Guard, Transportation Security Administration, Department of Homeland Security, and the Los Angeles Police Department to enhance security programs, equipment, and personnel. Current measures in place include the Sea Marshals Program, Port Security Task Force, and Operation Safe Commerce, with a container inspection facility shared with the Port of Long Beach. Shippers also choose the Port of Los Angeles for its excellent facilities. There are 23 major cargo terminals, including nine container terminals. Locked safely in each of the 20, 40, 
45 and 53 foot containers is a variety of cargo including items such as stereos, cameras, frozen food, fresh vegetables, fruits, clothing, computers, sports equipment, and even skateboards. There are, probably isn't a day that every member of your family doesn't use or come in contact with items shipped in a container through the Port of Los Angeles. The product goes into a container in the country where it's made or grown, that container is put on a ship, and it comes here. After unloading at the terminal, it goes onto the truck or train and is sent to a big warehouse where the contents are unloaded and then are trucked to stores or supermarkets where you and your family buy the product. Up ahead is the Everport Terminal Services, recognized by its candy cane striped gantry cranes. These special machines were developed specifically for container terminals. Depending on how and where they are built, they cost nearly $15 million each. The largest gantry cranes are used to load and unload ships that are so wide they cannot fit through the Panama Canal. The Port of Los Angeles is the busiest container port in the nation and eighth in the Western Hemisphere when combined with the Port of Long Beach. In 2019, the Port of Los Angeles moved 9.3 million containers. The port is not supported by taxes. Instead, its revenues come from tariffs for shipping services, property rentals, royalties, and other fees. We're approaching the Vincent Thomas Bridge and the official welcoming monument for the city of Los Angeles. It was built in 1963 by the state of California to connect San Pedro and the end of the Harbor Freeway with Terminal Island and Long Beach. The bridge is just over two miles long and towers 35 stories above the water. If you're around after sunset, you will see the magnificent blue lights installed on the bridge through efforts of the port and the community. The 160 energy efficient lamps with 360 light emanating diodes per lamp use the equivalent of 20 watts, which is supplied by a solar powered system and not a power grid. Beyond being energy friendly, they also are wildlife friendly and do not disturb the migratory birds who make the Vincent Thomas Bridge their home. We are now entering the Turning Basin where the really long ships, sometimes a thousand feet in length, turn around so they can be tied up to a berth facing toward the ocean. Ships dock facing toward open sea in case there's an emergency and they have to be towed or moved away in a hurry. But here's a fun fact. Cruise ships often use the Turning Basin to ensure they are sailing toward the open sea because it is bad luck to start a cruise off sailing backwards. The Turning Basin is the entrance to the West Basin, home to three major container terminals, China Shipping, Yang Ming, and Trey Pak. The Chinese Shipping and Yang Ming terminals are operated by West Basin Container Terminals and are operated as one joined facility. Like all other container terminals at the Port of Los Angeles, it too has its own on-dock rail facility. On-dock rail capabilities are important because it takes many of the big rig trucks off the highways. The trains transit through the downtown rail yards via the Alameda Corridor, which opened in 2002. The Alameda Corridor allows container cargo to move faster to and from the ports and has helped reduce vehicle emissions by eliminating 200 rail street crossings. Here at the West Basin Container Terminal, the Port of Los Angeles is the first in the world to plug container ships into clean electrical power known as AMP, alternative maritime power, while at dock instead of using diesel fuel. Since 2014, AMP is available and used at all of the Port of Los Angeles container terminals. The port continually works with our container terminal customers to introduce advanced technologies aimed at reducing the impact of port operations to air quality. In addition to the many efforts the port is involved in, it is also participating in the Global Environmental Ship Index Program, ESI. The Port of Los Angeles was the first U.S. port to participate in the ESI program. Shipping lines can earn a financial incentive when they route their newest and cleanest vessels to the port. 
In addition to Clean Ship Incentive Program, the port initiated a Clean Truck Program. As of January 2012, entering port facilities are required to meet 2007 Federal Clean Truck Emission Standards. Under the bridge is Catalina Express Terminal. This is where you can buy a ticket and board a boat or a helicopter to take you to Catalina Island. Just beyond Catalina Express, you'll find the Gateway Plaza and Cruise Ship Promenade. The Fanfare Fountain is a beautiful Bellagio-style fountain and offers a nightly water show. Check the website for the schedule. The Port's World Cruise Center is still the number one cruise center on the West Coast. Nearly a dozen cruise lines make their home here. More than a million happy people pass through this terminal on their way to cruise vacations in Mexico, Hawaii, Alaska, and other places around the globe. The battleship Iowa calls the Port of Los Angeles home. This battleship served in World War II, the Korean War, and the Cold War. It's more than 14 stories high, 888 feet long, and weighs more than 45,000 tons. Presidents Roosevelt, Ronald Reagan, and George H.W. Bush have all been aboard. It is the only battleship with a bathtub, courtesy of President Roosevelt. The large area just south of the cruise center is the Harbor Boulevard Promenade. Along the promenade, walkers can get a glimpse of the past by reading the historical story rope etched in the walkway. Learning more about the Gabrieleno and Chumash Indians and the Bay of Smokes, Mexican Hollywood, and how the railroads shaped the transportation movement. The port is transforming its waterfront, the LA waterfront, into a premier recreational destination. The entire eight mile stretch from the Vincent Thomas Bridge to the Federal Breakwater will be a dynamic promenade with landscaping, public art, recreation, and more. In a major harbor, such as the Port of Los Angeles, fire protection and firefighting services are extremely important. The Port of Los Angeles built the four fireboats for the Los Angeles Fire Department with the most modern firefighting technology. Fireboat number two, Warner Lawrence, is one of the most powerful fireboats and can discharge 38,000 gallons of water per minute. These fireboats ensure that the port and the fire department maintain a high level of service for many years to come. We are back at the Los Angeles Maritime Museum. We hope you enjoyed your virtual harbor tour at the Port of Los Angeles.